Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? Hello, my Level Up family. I am more excited than ever to be here with all of you. Last week, we spoke about 10 things that require zero talent. These are things you don't need to go to school for. You don't inherit, you aren't born with, and yet we have the power to master them all and truly level up our life. If you haven't listened to that yet, go back after today's episode and let me know some of the aha moments that you have. So, okay, this week we have something to celebrate. Of course, every week we have something to celebrate. We are living our best life, right? We're alive, we're thriving, we're grateful, we're excellent, we're abundant, we're unique, and the list goes on. But in addition to all of your awesomeness, our awesomeness, this is the 100th episode of Level Up with Debbie Neal. Actually, last week's affirmation was, but we're not going to count the affirmation as the 100th because we want it to be a full episode, okay? So technically it's 101, but we're going to make like it's our 100th episode. So this week, you know, when I was thinking, gosh, what do I want to talk about on my 100th episode? And there were so many different things that came up, but this week we're going to be talking about being willing to give up good for great right? Any of us, any of you have a good life already? Like, see, here's the problem with good. Many of us settle for good enough. Like when we have a good life, we tend to settle at the face of growth. We pull back with growing pains. We justify. You're here to level up. I'm here to level up. And leveling up requires giving up. Now, not throw, don't, you can hear give up and they throw in the towel. No, no, no. We need to give up something, right? Are you willing to give up good for great? Don't be afraid to give up the good for great because here's the thing. Life is about expanding. It's about being more, becoming more. As we grow, as we grow, we experience growing pains, which are amazing, by the way. You know, like when you work out, and you're sore, you know when you do lunges and you cannot sit down, it hurts, but you're okay with it because you know that on the other side of pain is results. So that's growing pains. In fact, I have one of my greatest leaders in my business and also one of my dearest friends, Wendy. And I have to say the last two years, I've kind of let my arms like go a little bit. And I was always so proud of how defined my arms are and I'm committed to getting them back. So she has better arms than me. So I'm like, what do you do? And so she's like, they're like little exercises, but like, they're so powerful. I was like, okay. She's like, they're done with three pound weights. I'm like, really? Because I have like five pounds or I have more. She goes, no, three. Okay. So she sends me these, she sends me a video of herself last night and I do them in my bathroom. You guys, my arms arm. She's like, oh, you just do a hundred of this rep and a hundred of that rep and a hundred of this rep. Well, I was like committed to that. Like I I wanted to cry after some of the reps at 50. Like my arms hurt so bad that when I did my lunges, I thought my arms were like spaghetti, but I was pumped. Like I was really pumped because I knew on the other side of that pain, I was going to be improving my arms. That's growing pains. They hurt sometimes, but it's good pain. It's results driven. The pain subsides as we develop. Like I know in a few days, my arms are not going to hurt, but the muscles are going to be more defined and start to build back to where I was. As a result of growing pains, we're, we're the next level, next level in skills, next level in confidence, perseverance, excellence, energy, grit, courage, and all sorts of things. Then it happens again. We hit a lid. And then we push through to do it all over again. So my friends, welcome it. Leave the fear of it behind. Leave it here with me. Like you can leave your fear here with me. I will take your fear. I'll lend you my faith, my belief. Here's the thing. Good is the thief of great. And I get it. 
there's a risk and there's fear involved. It's called change. It's expansion. It's leveling up. Most people are too afraid to let go. See, everything in life is an exchange. You must give up something to create something. You must give up the good to create the great. And in order to get what you've never had, you must be willing to do what you have never done. So what are we going to do today? Today, we're going to be talking about eight things to apply to your life, to apply to your job, to apply to your success, to apply to your business, whatever, to take you from good to great because you were born and then, you know, go to great to excellence, right? But we're going to go from good to great. Number one, have a why that makes you work. Like it makes you work because it will, it, it's almost unacceptable to let like my why, when there's people involved in my why and there are, like I'm letting them down if I don't work. So what moves you? What drives you? What is it that would excite you? And for me, you know, and I know I've talked about this on past podcasts. For me, when I started, As an entrepreneur, which was 16 years ago, this month, I don't know when you're going to be listening to this, but this is May right now of 2022. So it was 16 years ago for me. And it was, why did I start? Like, what was my why? And my why was obviously to create income, to travel, but a big why for me was to pay for my children's college education without loans. My friends, that made me work. And so I wrote down on a piece of paper, like, so visualize this. I wrote $1 million. I didn't write it in words. I wrote it in numbers. So one comma zero, 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 comma zero, zero, zero on a piece of paper. And to me, that represented an average college tuition for four kids total, right? And that was after their amazing merit. So I'm very grateful. My kids are great students, um, all AP, all honors. They really pride themselves. So they do their part by getting merit, okay? And so I was basically thinking 250 a child, roughly. You guys, there were times I didn't feel like taking things to the next level. But you know what? A million dollar why forced me to work. I made a commitment. I declared it. I chose my pain every day. Every day we have a choice. The pain of discipline, right? Doing what we said we were going to do, working whatever it is we're creating, or the pain of regret. See, the thing is, I was unwilling, unwilling to have my kids take out student loans knowing I had the power. So I'm not, I'm not saying this from a judgment thing. A lot of people today are take out either student loans for themselves. Their parents take it out for them. College is very expensive and most average in household incomes can't, can't do it. Right. But see, I, when we know better, we do better. I was presented with something. I made a decision and I was like, I was leveling up my life and my success and my business. I had the power and the ability to do something about it. Right. I was unwilling not to choose to do something about it. When your why is big enough, you give up good for great. I had a good life. I had a nice house, a beautiful family, and it seemed like a good life. And it was, but it wasn't a great life. It wasn't a great life. We had money conversations. We stressed out about bills. We didn't have a plan for college. I wanted more. I wanted a great life. We have one go around, no dress rehearsal. And in order to have great, something needed to change in me. We have the ability to create a great life, but we have to be willing to give up the good one. I, you guys, I gave up social things. If it didn't move me closer to my goals, I said no. And to many, they're like, you know what? That's unattractive to me. I don't, I don't want to say no. You know what? We get to choose every day. Having student loans was unattractive to me. It was sexier to me to push, to grow, to become great, to help others be- become great and leave the good behind. So find your why and a why that's more than saving the world, right? Because that's my passion. I want to change the world, but it has to be more definite, more articulate. Like it can't be like if I don't work today or tomorrow, is the whole world going to change, right? So it's, you're going to have an impact with 
doing things over and over and over, but your why needs to be more definite. So for me, that's my passion, getting in the hearts and the souls of others so they can reach their God-given potential. That's part of my why. But it needs to also be more personal, a personal why that makes you work. That's why it's so important to keep creating and expanding your why. You know, I've already put one of my children completely through college. My daughter, Brooke, is 23. She's out of college. My son, Tyler, he's, so now it's May. He just finished his junior year. He's going to be a senior next year. So I'm almost done. I'm almost done putting two kids completely through college. Right. And then my twins will go in and they, they'll have four years. So what's happened? My why has expanded. If we don't expand it, then we get comfortable in what we have created. I'm so grateful for the life I have created, but now I want to take what I've created and level it up. I've leveled up my life. I've worked for my why. Now what's the next level of my why? Because I'm unwilling to settle for good. See, what was once great, once we create it, right? My life is now great because I worked from the good that I once knew. So now it's time to do it again because now my life that I'm currently in is good and we have the next level of great, a new level of great and leave behind today's good. When we stop evolving our why, we settle for good, right? Like we can't just meet the why. If it's for me, if I pay for my kids' college education or for you, whatever it is, it could be retirement, it could be paying your mortgage, whatever. Once we create that, maybe it's a title you worked for. Okay, hooray. We did it. We pushed. We created. Now what? If there's not the next level, you're going to be living in good. And when you live in good, your good might eventually become bad, right? Because when we stop growing and expanding, we're, we're moving one way. Okay. Duplicate the best. Surround yourself with great mentors, like great leaders who are great, leaders who force you to level up, leaders that inspire you to be more, leaders who do more and have more leaders that you feel inspired to expand around. Like they're earning more. They have bigger lives than you. They're making a bigger impact in the world than you are today. And you don't, you don't want to be the biggest fish in the room. If you're earning the most, if you're the best player, if you have the highest rank, you're in the wrong room because you know what's going to happen? We're going to think we're greater than we really are. Not that we're not great, but we're going to be capping our success. We end up thinking, wow, well, this is our, not competition, right? Because we're always in collaboration. We're not in competition, very low energy. We only compete with ourselves. But like if if you're the best in the room, then you kind of think you're better than we really are. And then where do we go from there, right? We end up thinking we're better than we are. So here's an analogy. I always come up with crazy analogies. A sandwich looks like a great meal when it's next to a cracker, right? If you have a choice between a rich cracker and like maybe like an amazing turkey sandwich on grain bread, okay? Looks like, but it doesn't really look like a great meal if you put it next to lobster and filet mignon, right? So that's, that's what I'm talking about. Be around people who remind you of your greatness. Be chasing excellence. Don't settle for good. Number three, raise your standard. Unleash that giant inside of you. Tap into your potential. Be the pace setter. Be an earner. Meet and exceed deadlines. Do more than what is expected. I can remember starting my business and it could really sound ego-based. It was, it's so not my intention, but it was like, I was applying my work ethic and my vision and I was committed to making my name a verb. Like an, cause what is a verb? It's an action. And years later, like I did hear things like, I'm going to Debbie Neal it. And I was like, huh, that's a verb. They're going to Debbie Neal it. Right. So it's action-based. It's, it's surrounded in great. Number four, take massive action. You can listen to podcasts, you can listen to trainings, you can listen to and read the most inspiring books out there. Without action, nothing changes. Action is the only thing, the only thing that is going to propel you from good to great. Don't avoid the one thing that has the power to move you. We don't level up from thinking. We don't level up from worrying. We don't level up by analyzing. We take action, massive action, create activity, speak from your heart, set goals, create urgency, create tight deadlines. 
Do five things that scare you every single day. Do more than anyone else. Are you willing to outwork everyone? So many people fear action today. We get so caught up in perfection that we end up leading a life of procrastination. When we don't take action, we feel unworthy. You aren't unworthy. None of you are unworthy. I'm not unworthy. You are just telling yourself that story and your subconscious brain is screaming, danger, danger, every single time you think of taking a step forward. When we have a good life, we hide in that comfort. Instead of taking action, we get lost. We get busy. We use our why as our excuse. We allow ourselves to get distracted. And notice how I said we allow ourselves to get distracted. A distraction is something we allow us to prevent us from taking action. That's all it is. People who allow distractions to hold them back from greatness are subconsciously looking for reasons to stay in their comfort zone and they are relieved and justified when something shows up. And you might want to smack me right now, but I love you enough to speak the truth. So taking action is how you go from good to great. It's how you make things happen. Throw yourself into massive action. Focus on taking steps every day. Before you know it, you're going to look up and be in the land of great because you chose not to stay in the land of mediocre, mediocre. Okay. Becoming great. I always pronounce that word wrong. Becoming great is a decision. Staying good is a decision. Choose wisely. No matter what comes your way, consistent action will grow you through it. Average, they pull back. Average, sit. They wait. They're waiting for that storm to pass. Great, learn to dance in the rain. There isn't an obstacle or a setback that can withstand the power of consistent action sustained over time. Number five become a lifer. And we talked about this in the episode that I did. I think it's called Burn the Boats. You cannot become great if there's an exit plan. You'll never leave good if you have a timeline. You'll never take the steps in courage if your actions depend on the reactions of the people around you. Lifers, they're all in. They build until they and now, now here's the thing. Don't confuse a lifer with taking the slow boat to nowhere. And I've heard people say, I know I'm not where I want to be, but I'm a lifer. A lifer doesn't mean you need a lifetime to get there. If you fall down 10 times, get up 11 times. Build your belief daily. Create a vision. Talk about the future. Build the present, but be a lifer. Number six, get up and rise. Success is all about failing forward. Don't ever settle for good enough because of the fear of what it's going to take to grow into great, to get up, to rise, to control our mind. If you think it's hard, it just became hard. If you think you can't handle the pressure, your mind will scream danger at the first sign of pressure. Remember, we love pressure. It is how diamonds are formed under extreme heat and pressure. There is no such thing as failure. It's all feedback. It's learning. With every setback, we learn. With every obstacle, we expand. Don't allow the temptation of staying down in your good enough to keep you from the great life that is waiting for you. And I've been there, my friends. I'd be lying to you if I said there haven't been painful valleys that I've been in that have tempted me to stay in my good, to justify where I was. But that was my ego speaking. It was just my ego justifying my good life and attempting to keep me safe and small. I was made for more. You were made for more. I'm not here for good. I'm obsessed with great. I'm committed to rise and rise better each and every time. Number seven, surrender and release. Let the past go past failures. Like, think about it. Have you missed goals in the past? Because sometimes that prevents us from going for it again. Go for it again. Let it go. When we live there, it keeps us from going for them again. We remember the pain, the hurt, the disappointment. We remember the effort we put in only to fall short. Get up. Stop bargaining with the devil. Stop bargaining with good. The devil wants you to play small. He's going after the very things that tug at your heart. He's going to tempt you to stay in your good. He'll give you a life that's good enough so you're not tempted to leave him. He knows 
damn well, the bigger we become, the more influence we have, the more love that we spread, the more confidence we share, the more joy we illuminate. He doesn't want that. And don't you fall into that trap. Don't carry baggage. Surrender the past. Learn from it. Feel gratitude for it. There's always a lesson. Surrender and release it. You cannot become great dwelling in the past. You'll end up settling for good to keep yourself safe. Number eight, coach up. We We talk about level up, coach up. We all have blind spots. Coach up, go to your mentor, go to someone with more success, a bigger business, go to someone who wants the best for you. And so what does that mean? A lot of times people are like, oh, I have accountability partner. If they're not like way bigger than I am right now, they're not my accountability partner because they may give me permission to play smaller because they're not playing bigger yet. If you want great, go to great. Open your heart for feedback. And trust me, you may be thinking you're doing all the right things, but there are things you are avoiding. We all have it. There are things holding you back from great. Ask, truly ask. And here's the key, be willing to hear it. Feedback from someone who wants you to win is the best feedback. It's part of the recipe for giving up our good to become our great. Friends, it's time to unleash your great, to step into your light, to shed your good. Let's get really real. Are you playing to win? Are you creating a life that you are obsessed about? Does your vision drive you? Does your vision inspire you? Can you see your next level? Can you see the great version of your life? Don't settle. Don't fear. Don't do good enough. You are made for more. People are waiting for you. Your family's waiting for you. If you have kids, they're waiting for you. Our example of growth is everything. With every stretch, with every level comes a better version of you. Success is all about building and expanding into the best version of you. My friend, starting a podcast was on my heart for a year before I started. My life was good. I was already speaking into the hearts of many. I was made for more. I was called for more. You are too. We all are. I love you enough to call you on your good and demand your great. You deserve to be surrounded by others to expect it and demand it. So next week, we're going to be talking about elevating our leadership. So this episode we just did was our 100th episode, and I'm so grateful you are here. I'm committed and obsessed to expand our Level Up fam. So please share with others, like share the links, invite them to join us. You know, when you, when you, when you have the opportunity to go onto Apple or whatever podcast, um, platform you're on, give the, give the podcast a five stars and a review. The more we rate high and the more we leave a review, the more lives we reach because it just touches more people. It gives us more expansion and together we're making such an impact. I love you friends.